It is Friday, June 10th. So we got a Friday instead of a Saturday for the vlog today because I got to take some time off of work. So we're here in front of the grapevines. One of the things about this time of year is we have a lot of different fruit that's ripening up here on the farm. It's great to see that these grapevines are doing well. In fact, these grapevines have been in the ground for just over a year and a half. We planted these in October of 2020 and they are loaded with fruit and looking beautiful. One of the challenges we have is we wound up using so much bird netting for the peach trees to keep those away from birds that we forgot totally about the grapevines needing. Yeah. Bird netting. <laughs> we had to order more. <laughs> you decided you're going to go ahead and organza bag these. Well, yeah. We have some bundles that are ripening and I would rather try to save them from the birds getting to them first. So one of the things that we're challenged with this time of year, in fact, this week in particular, is we have our first official heat wave and we have heat warnings in effect. In fact, that'll even be the case today, which is why we're trying to get stuff done so early. We're really focused on ensuring that everything here on the farm is gonna get through the heat, uh, especially the dry heat in June that we see. We are watering our main orchards, so that's not all 170 fruiting trees and bushes here on the farm, but our main orchards, so our larger trees, those are getting about 60 gallons once per week. They watered a week ago today in fact half of them did so it'll be interesting to see as we go into our weather this weekend we're going to get up to about 112 as far as the forecast is concerned that's 112 fahrenheit which winds up being about 44 degrees celsius so nice and warm <laughs> for us so it'll be a good test to see if that watering schedule is going to hold out some of our plums that started to ripen up and those were starting to get attacked by birds, which is pretty common. So we decided to get some organza bags on those, <laughs> right? Yeah. See if we can keep a few of those for ourselves. We'll those see. were the blueberries. One of the things we found this morning that we weren't expecting is we had, we lost our Lorna apricot <laughs> and we don't even know when or how. So broke right at the graft again and it was staked. So the fact that it broke and it was staked leaves it a little suspect in my opinion. The fact that we lost the cotton candy aprium and the Lorna apricot now, both breaking right at the graft. Uh, that is the first time we've had that happen and we've grown apricots and apriums before. So to see that happen back to back with both plantings from last fall has us concerned. Lori and I are over here talking a little bit about the pasture trying to figure out you know, how we wanna deal with the alfalfa that's coming in and keeping it mowed down where we need to, but also nice and healthy through the summer. As we're standing here, it's about 85 degrees this morning, getting ready to do a project. I look over as we're talking and we've got a rattlesnake. I believe this is the third rattlesnake that we've seen here on the farm. Now the reality is we know they're here. We don't mind having the non-venomous snakes here, which we have a lot of, we see them fairly often, I'd say every few months, especially this time of year. But rattlesnakes, that doesn't go well when you have a farm where there's people on and off that farm. So unfortunately, this one cannot stay. But we get the question all along, how often do we see rattlesnakes? Well, we saw one today.
So we have ducks and they are starting to get big. They've been on the farm for just over a week and like most poultry, they're growing very, very quickly. So the reality for us here is we need to make sure that we have an enclosure ready to go outside for them as we move them outdoors here over the next few weeks. So we installed this 10 by 10 dog kennel last week and the one thing we didn't have done is we didn't have anything to cover the top. So with ducks, we have a concern with aerial predators that we don't have with our goats. So what we've done is we've come back and we've added some chicken wire across the top. We were able to actually include a 10 foot piece of EMT that we extended across the middle to help hold the chicken wire up so it's not drooping down. And then we were also able to come back, attach hog rings and tighten up all of the chicken wire. So it's actually nice and clear underneath and easy enough, at least for me, to be able to walk freely underneath. Now we'll still come back and attach shade cloth, but that's not today. So it is about 20 minutes to nine in the morning and it's getting hot. We still got some harvesting to do. We need to get our very first tomato, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> it's our first ripe tomato, we should be fair. Last year we had a bunch of green tomatoes because we had to pull them early with the frost, but we finally have our spring tomatoes that are ripening up. Nice big tomato. And that is destined for burgers tomorrow night. Yes. Oh yeah. That'll be good. That'll be really good. <laughs> Wrapped up our peach season. So we've had a solid month of eating peaches every day. Wrapped up with the early grande. We've got one here that we'll be enjoying here before we have breakfast this morning. We're getting inside. It's nine o'clock is our shutoff time <laughs> here in the summertime because man, it gets brutally hot and it's very dry still. No moisture. We haven't had moisture for months. We've got about a half an inch of rain so far total, which all happened over about a three hour window. The chickens are now getting their standing water. That's how we ensure that they make it through the summer. We change that out, what, every couple I've days? I've been doing it every day. So every day, just to make sure that it stays clean and they stand in that water, especially as it heats up to cool themselves down. We have yet to lose a chicken to the heat. Mm -hmm. And we've been raising chickens now for what, six years? We do keep an eye on the trees this time of year. Last year, when we saw temps above 110 with the younger trees. We had some trees starting to struggle and we had to increase the water by about 50% to keep them alive. We're hopeful that this season we've got deeper root penetration and these trees are more mature and we actually won't need as much water. I don't know whether that'll happen this year or not, but we keep an eye on the fig trees. Those tend to be the first trees that struggle. Right now they're beautiful green. I mean, just as, as beautiful as can be. One other thing is that new Shanxi Lee Jujubee. That thing is already starting to take off. It had a piece of fruit on it that I actually had to take off this morning, <laughs> but it's got new growth pushing out and those Jujubee trees, man, they love the heat. So one of the things that we have for the first time making it to ripeness is watermelons. And we've never grown watermelons before, at least not to ripe. We've attempted it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this time it looks like we maybe have been successful. We have several watermelons that I don't know whether they're ripe or not. So I think what we need to do is get your guys' input. So if, <laughs> yeah, how do we know? How do we know when a watermelon is ripe? We do know that these are small watermelons. Yeah. So I'm thinking they're at least pretty close. I'm just afraid that we're gonna have to pick one just to see what happens. But if you guys have some suggestions, some of you pros out there with watermelons, we're not, we're rookies. We would, love to, we would love to get some input there. One of the things that we asked you guys for last week was names for the two geese that we have. Yeah. So we're gonna narrow that down. YouTube forces us to narrow that down to five names. So we're gonna choose our five favorite out of the group of names that you guys sent us, which by the way, were a few dozen. Oh, there's more than that. In my book, I've been writing them down. There's, I'm like on four pages. So what yeah. that means is we may need to get more geese. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> or start naming ducks. Maybe that's part of it. But we do want to get your guys' input. We're going to try to get a poll up. In fact, it should be up by the time you guys are seeing this. Would love it if you guys would head over there and vote to make sure that we get the right names for those geese. Yeah. So just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We cover a lot of things here. Obviously, we are starting a new functioning farm here in the Arizona desert. Would love to have you as a subscriber. Questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section down below. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with a link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. For that, and now we have three spots versus two. Uh, I have ants crawling on Yeah, the I, had, I, I saw it. Oh crap, we do, we gotta get up, there's ants. <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere. Are you serious? Yeah, I think they're crawling up the... Here, let me see. I'll get you, you get me. Ooh, that's that's pretty sexy. Well, <laughs> if you lift your shirt to me again, the vlog is over.